Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do a quick uh, video on the Nimble XV2. John was kind enough to send one of these my way for review, and um, the drop is happening today at 1 p.m. Eastern. So this video is going to drop right before that. So hopefully if you're looking to pick one up, this will give you an idea of uh, the size, the feel, all that good stuff. But um, the quick and dirty on this guy is they absolutely killed the V2. Um, I'm always, always happy to see CQI. It's something I strive to do myself with Colin and Devo Knives. When we release a model, we want that model to be the best it can. So you release it and then you collect feedback, right? You don't just release it and then when people give you critiques, you say, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, you write that shit down or you remember it or you take the good with the bad. Not everybody's critique is good, but you take what you can from that and then you build, right? So what did John do? Well, he added this amazing milling pattern to the scales. Milling just sets off knives, guys. It's something I've learned recently is milling is definitely the way to go when possible. Um, I love this pattern. The only negative to the milling pattern, it's the same thing that I felt on the TW Price Dawn, is that sometimes when you're gripping it, it almost feels like you're slipping because of the way these are cut. It feels like your hand's kind of slipping, but it's not. So it's just a, it's just something you have to get used to. Um, it is not a negative. It's just something interesting. Um, excuse me. This puppy is dead nut centered. I did disassemble this um, because I was having a little bit of tightness right through here. And what that was is that QSP assembles these with some kind of thick grease. And uh, a lot of Chinese companies use that stuff. I think it's because it stays in place and long term. If you don't dissimilar your knives, you won't have to, right? So I, I had a little bit of that, uh, you know, kind of issue right here where it was uh, sticking through there. So I took it apart. I actually put skiffs in it because I can't resist when I take a knife apart. If I can skiff it, I will. And you can skiff this. It's 5 millimeter, 1 16th, 13 ball bearings. Um, or is it 11 ball? It's the single row, uh, 5 millimeter, 1 16th. Um, so skiffs are in here. Um, it, took, it came apart flawlessly. You literally take this screw out, T8. Take this screw out, T8. And this screw, T8. Boom. Scale comes off. Then you can do your thing, put it back together. And it's real simple. Um, so yeah, what was I talking about? Um, he added the milling lines. He made this a full hollow grind guys. This is a full, let me repeat a full hollow grind. That is amazing to see on a production knife like this. Um, I'm really happy that he got QSP to pull that off because it's really, really well done. It cuts like a dream. Um, you have that really nice uh, fuller slash blood groove that EMP is known for along with this hole. You have his EMP style jimping across the top here. Um, another thing he changed is the gap. So when you look at the Nimble X, the original, it was a blown up version of the Nimble. And the Nimble has this sort of hump right here that you have to keep you have to pinch your fingers between it's something you have to get used to is it bad not really you just get used to it but when you blow that up to an x size that hump gets bigger and it was a little bit uh uncomfortable on the full size i don't think i really complained about it but um he shrunk that hump down so now it's minimal now when you grip this you can see my fingers are much closer together than on the X, if you go watch my videos on that. And this thing is really comfortable in hand. You have a very nice 50-50 choil, which is my preference for a choil because you get, you still get a lot of edge, right? You still get a lot of blade length. Um, and you also get a choil. It's just the perfect uh, combo for me. But this thing is very easy to wield is the best way to call it. Um, 
and yeah it's really really nice if you are at a gas station on a friday night this thing is really good for that as well you can drop your thumb right here you have a little bit of a guard now here and your slurpee is protected all right so um definitely cool there we have a pivot collar on each side that's a nice little touch right there this version is the all tie with um or sorry, the plain tie with blue accents and a stonewash blade, which I wouldn't have chose myself, but I actually really like it. Um, I'm normally the bronze tie guy with the gold and the and the belt satin. Um, that's my go-to just because I love uh, a belt satin. Um, sorry, that was me. So yeah, action-wise, this thing is on point, guys. There is something about the nimble in general and perfect deployment like there's just something about how he placed that detent ball and how qsp sets these detents that it works perfectly for every deployment method you have a flipper flipper right here um and as you can see it fires it is uh it is a healthy detent guys it is not like just lackadaisically firing i am pull pull pressure pressure i mean you can see it it fires so really good there. Front flipper, you got this jumping right here, goes up to the top. I do wish it kind of curled up and over, but I usually push down here anyway. Um, the front flipper detent, fantastic. It is probably the least satisfying of the deployments, and I'm not sure why that is. I think possibly just because of the width of the knife. Like, it's a wide knife. You see this whole area here I have to account for that when i flip around um it's not bad or anything it's good it's just i rarely find myself front flipping it unless i'm showing somebody how to front flip it <laughs> if that makes sense um but then we come to the hole the emp edc elongated pill shaped hole with fuller and oh my god it is on point friends this detent is money um the thumb flick i haven't even tried a thumb flick i don't thumb flick uh these knives much but yeah thumb flick's easy lefty should be eh, it's okay you don't have as much access but you can do it um lefty reverse flick assuming you get one that has a similar lock bar pressure you just rest your thumb down here and i have no problem firing it um, if i ride up here it does lock it up so you just kind of, but luckily my natural grip is like right here and I can fire no problem. So will uh, depend on the person, but you can also just rock the pivot. That is the age old lefty move, rock the pivot and fire or rock the clip and fire. It's a little harder for me because my hands are too big, I guess, for that. I don't know, or maybe too small, I'm not sure. But that flick is absolute money and just makes me happy, guys. Um, the action on this, there is no lock stick at all. It drops and shakes down. Now, I will say, before the skips, it was just as good. Um, honestly, guys, skips, oops, um, skips don't improve your action, really. Um... What they improve is your lateral strength, so side-to-side -side play because you have a more solid cage in there and not some ass-ended thing in there, right? So it's a more solid side-to-side -side. in general. I'm not saying on this knife. I can explain why this has amazing stability, but um, yeah, they do that, and then they offer a smoother experience, which sometimes leads to a more drop-shut feeling. But it's not necessarily more drop shut. That's not the point of skips. And I think some people think that is. But the reason it's smoother and, and allows for a smoother closing is because there's more ceramic balls in there than the standard uh, bearings. Usually the standard bearings have like 8 or 9, and these have 11 or 12, right? So it's just more surface area of ceramic gliding on the blade, right? Um, these have amazing stability from day one with uh, the Nimble because of how much of this blade hides inside the handle. I mean, you can see where that flipper tab is, right? So that flipper tab is pretty much, I mean, that is part of the blade 
and it, it helps with stability. And you can see the flipper tab's not all that tall, right? So there is a healthy chunk of knife inside this handle. And because of that, and then it's tightened down with a pivot, it has a lot more side-to-side -side stability than other knives. Um, if I look at, this is just a random example, but this is a Kaiser. You see how much of the blade is inside that handle right there? It's not all that much, right? And it's also very thin. So it's going to be able to, you can see I'm flexing this side to side. Does it really have play? Not really, but I can flex the shit out of it so it kind of feels like it has play. This is an absolute tank, right? It's not going anywhere. Um, up, down, side to side, it is locked in place. So if you are a fan of stable knives in that sense, the Nimble family is definitely for you. Um, Lockup is fantastic. We are looking at, you know, 20%, something like that, which is fantastic for me. I don't like late lockup. I don't like early either, but there you go. We have a beautiful finish on it. I mean, it's just really nice, guys. Um, blue clip. It works fantastic. Been carrying this one for a few days and loving it. Um, yeah, I can highly recommend this one, guys. It's going to come down to the size for you. Um, you know, the X size is, is at the cusp for me of what I want. I don't want a knife that's uberly huge, but he made it for the people who do want that, right? Um, he has the Nimble already, which is a, a 3.1 inch blade. So this is 3.5, I believe. And, um, so yeah, it's at the cusp for me. I mean, if you look at it compared to the Evo 2, should be right about the same size as an Evo 2. Yep, three and a half inch blade, eight inches overall. It's basically um, a lot of people's sweet spot, you know? So there you go. That is the Nimble XV2. Highly recommend it, guys. Uh, big thank you to John for sending this my way. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I haven't uh, had uh, EMP EDC knives in in a while, just out of happenstance. And, um, I, you know, it just reminds you of why they're so popular, <laughs> you know? Um so definitely check it out, guys. Dropping at 1 p.m. today. Might already be released at this point, but hopefully you get one. Um, I think the price point is $350. Don't hold me to that, but I think so. And I'm not positive, but it, I think it's M390 and titanium again, uh, which is what he's done in the past. Let me see if I can... Usually he puts that on there, right? Isn't it like on the blade somewhere? Didn't he usually put it right there? I guess he stopped doing that. Huh. Interesting. Um, I think I have a paper, too. Hold on. I want you to know. Um, okay, Nimble X. M390. There you go. M390. And um, handle finishes. Milled, DLC, and Stonewash. Okay, so this is just one of the options. That's cool. A uh, blade finish, satin, stone wash, or DLC. Uh, black washed. Cool, cool. Love that. Um, and it's 4.4 ounces. But I got to say, it does not feel heavy. 4.4 is not heavy to me, but some people might consider it to be. Um, I think for this size of knife, this is perfectly fine. I mean, I'm sure it's milled out to the gills. Yep, milled out. Um... Yeah, it's a really good one, guys. Um, there is no play in this detent at all. I mean, I'm pulling it out at that point. Um, there's no play in this at all. So that's good to see um, from QSP. And uh, they pretty much nailed everything, you know. Um, and I took this apart and put it back together. And it came right back together, centered right up. Action was perfect right away. Um, I said I had that little hiccup, but that's just because they use that grease and it was all over the detent track. Um, and I think it just kind of was binding shit up. So I just cleaned that off, put my KPL heavy on there. And now, um, as you can see, it swims right through there, swings and then drops down. So I'm going to shut up. I love you guys. Check it out. Link below. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic Saturday and happy Easter. And I will catch you later.